Russell's undefeated Miners will be facing the Hoosiers of Indiana. Chevy dealers in Central Indiana, we drive Chevy. By Bank One, we're 18,000 people who care. By your local AgriCenter dealer, for your farm, your family, your piece of America. AgriCenter means more. And by Budweiser, Beachwood Age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. Indiana University basketball is also brought to you in part by Hooks, dependable drugstores. We're live from Assembly Hall in Bloomington, Indiana, where today's six and four Hoosiers host the seven and zero Texas El Paso Miners. Hello, everyone. Chuck Marlowe with John Laskowski. John, it's never out of the fire for the Hoosiers. Coming off a good game last Wednesday against Arkansas Little Rock, and they face an equally tough and equally disciplined and athletic Texas minor squad. They really played a good game against Little Rock, and uh, Texas El Paso is undefeated, although they haven't played a lot of stiff competition. I think Indiana will be their best game so far. They have a big lineup and a quick lineup. The Indians had trouble against those type of teams this year. Okay, we'll be back with the starting lineups in just a moment. Don't go away. Coaches Bob Knight and Don Haskins. Haskins is in his 28th year with Texas El Paso. And Bob, of course, completing his 18th year here, 24 overall. That little slap on the back of the head went to Norm Ellenberger, who's an assistant coach with uh, the Miners now. We're all set to get things underway. Let's go down to Chuck Cramp. Welcome to the Assembly Hall and today's game. Let's meet the starting lineups. For the Miners from the University of Texas at El Paso. At one forward, a 6'7 junior from Omaha, Nebraska, number 23, Jerry Johnson. And at the other forward, a 6'9 freshman from Mesa, Arizona, number 52, David Van Dyke. The center, a 6'9 junior from Oakland, California, number 34, Antonio Davis. At one guard, a six-foot junior from Chicago, Illinois, number 10, Tim Hardaway. And at the other guard, a 5'10 sophomore from Lexington, Kentucky, number 13, Prince George. The head coach for the Miners, now in his 28th season at El Paso, Mr. Don Haskins. And now for the Hoosiers of Indiana, Other forward, a 6'2 senior from Glendale, California, number 44, Joe Hillman. In the middle, he's a 6'9 senior from Salina, Kansas, number 11, Todd Jadlow. At one guard, a 6'4 sophomore from Marion, Indiana, number 3, Jay Edwards. Rounding out the starting lineup at the other guard, a 6'1 sophomore from Marion, Indiana, number four, Lyndon Jones. The head coach for the Hoosiers, now in his 18th season in Bloomington, Bob Knight. We join now with the Indiana University Basketball Pep Band being conducted by Professor Kevin Castens and featured vocalist Professor Roy Samuelson. Let us pay honor to America. Ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we Oh! 
experiencing a bit of audio trouble along our network lines. We want to alert each of the affiliates to today's broadcast that we are trying to rectify that as quickly as possible. Please be patient. Players to watch for, Texas El Paso, number 10 is Hardaway. 19 and a half points a game. He's just a sophomore out of Chicago, very quick. He's the point guard. He likes to control the ball and the tempo of the game. And an interesting player for them is David Van Dyke, 6'9", 180 pounds freshman. You look at the matchup uh, in the series. He averages five block shots a game. He's just a true freshman. Just getting the game in, he's going to be the tall, skinny one out there. And they, look, they've got him matched up against Tillman. Jadlow gets a start today because the Miners are a tall team. Chucky White started last Wednesday, and then Jadlow gets the call today. Indiana with the opening tip, and it goes right to Edwards as uh, they walk right into a zone. And uh, interesting zone. A 3-2 yes. zone with 6-9 Davis, number 34 at the point. It'll be tough for Lyndon or Jay to shoot over the top of him. Hillman. Indiana has some good outside shooters in there right now. There's a good example as Anderson had moved out to about 16 feet to pop his first field goal. And that's the area to take the shot from. With three defensive players at the free throw line, that means the shot's got to come from the baseline if you move the ball quick. Well, a good screen was set up Indiana on the Aaron shot uh, taken by Van Dyke, and he's not afraid to put it up about one pass, and uh, they move that ball right down into shooting position. Very quick team out there much as uh, what we've seen the last couple of games. There's a kick to the ball. And Van Dyke again, uh, all around him. Boy, he is lean, 6'9". Yeah, they will play a man-to-man, -man, but I think they like to start in this zone just to see what you can do with it. Uh, with uh, Davis way out on top. There he is, 34, Long Linton. Indiana has opened the scoring. We have completed one minute of play. There's the man that scored it, Eric Anderson. Dropped off Jones. Here he is all alone, Joe Hillman. Two more. Good ball motion. Linda Jones had it. That third man on the top has to come out, which means a baseline man has to swing if you rotate it. Twice now, Texas El Paso has not been able to recover the baseline to prevent that shot. Joe Hillman, everyone hoping that he has a game like he had last Wednesday. Uh, young man with 18 points, eight rebounds. Indiana, statistically, 52% wins. Number 13 is Prince Stewart. Again, good defense by Indiana. That's really what's been paying the way here. Hillman's been inserted a forward. He's a small player, of course. Look at how big the player he's guarding is. Uh, but the uh, the defense has really picked up. They've really held the other team's field goal shooting way down. Hardaway and Anderson holding his position out of bounds. It's on the line, they say, a last touch by Van Dyke. And again, Anderson in there battling against uh, a little bit taller. They, they list Van Dyke at 6'9", and Anderson is 6'9". I think Van Dyke maybe has a slight edge. Side to Hillman. Oh, and man, man, man defense. Goes for the ball out of bounds, Indiana. There's some more good hustle. And out on the floor to help retrieve it, the general himself. 28 years, Don Haskins at Texas El Paso. I talked to uh, one of their TV reporters. He said back in the 70s, he did take another job at Detroit for one day. And he resigned <laughs> and went back to Texas El Paso. He won a national championship back in the mid 60s for Texas West. And that's right. It was known as Texas Western back then. They changed the name almost immediately after. Uh, Texas Western, very well known for, as we look at uh, this replay, very well known for its track and field as well. Good lead. This is a man-to-man -man now. Anderson had his man beat. And there's uh, Davis coming over to try the block, but he gets called for the foul. First foul of the game, the 6'9 junior from Oakland, California. Indiana with the lead. A chance here we can take a look it was called to my attention that anderson uh, uh shoots the ball uh, in a very orthodox style but he has a tendency to follow the ball as is that good or bad uh, with his eyes a lot of players do that but i think uh, i never did and i think a lot of players don't uh, concentrate on the rim a lot more uh, didn't seem to bother him there six to nothing now again yeah with some pretty good pressure Edwards off his feet, but still a good position, so there was no shot. Hardaway tries to feed it in, back out on top to Stewart. Hardaway makes the drive, goes right up over Anderson, and Anderson with good position pulls it down. Hardaway has not been able to get that offense going for Texas El Paso. Drops it off, Jadlow up off. No good, tipped up by Jones, back into Jadlow's hands. Good hands this time, he's had some trouble hanging on the ball, but he concentrated on that. Texas El Paso's weaknesses is, is rebound, defensive rebounding. They've given up that offensive board. Linda Jones really kept that one alive. 
reset of the shot clock, so it's not a factor, and uh, that misses. Anderson tried to chase it down, but Van Dyke was over there to clear. This is Van Dyke. Looking inside. There's Van Dyke, rather. A blocking foul. That's and throw against the minor. Right. Illegal pick. Jerry Johnson. That's his first foul, team second. The Miners having a tough time getting started. Three minutes in the game now, and they still haven't scored. Again, uh, just like uh, Little Rock, the defense has really come on strong. The half-court defense that Dandy has been able to run. If a team fast uh, breaks, of course, they can't set that up. Out of bounds, Indiana. Jim Bain, along with Steve Wilmer and Randy Drury, are the officials for today's game. Bain making that call underneath the Indiana offensive basket. Edwards steps up, that's short, gets his rebound, goes right back up and lays it in. Soft over the front rim, so a good position by Jay as he followed. I think he knew that was going to be short. He had a little higher arch than he normally does, but he quickly went in, got it, ended up with an easy layup. Don Haskins can't afford to let this lead get too big. And there's a turnaround off the rim. Pulled down by Jablo. And a scores here, I would imagine Haskins might might call for a timeout. Knocked away, knocked out of his hands. 23, Jerry Johnson getting the ball. Now the Miners have a chance to drive. Hardaway up of the glass. A foul will go against Indiana on that drive. Well, that was a little delayed fast break, and Hillman was caught on Hardaway, and really that was Jones's man. You can see Joe looking over the bench. When you're coming down that fast break and a man's over the ball, you got to guard him, and that's what happened to Hillman. He was the closest guy to the man with the ball, and even though that's not his man, he's got to stay with him, and Hardaway was able to get around him. Hardaway from Chicago, Illinois, six-foot junior. Sends the first on its way. Let's watch Edwards. He takes this shot. The man doesn't block out, so Jay sneaks right in, gets an easy rebound, one dribble, and he's got a layup. Tim Hardaway. Putting the Miners on the board. Here's the second, and it's good. So the Texas El Paso Miners now trail by six, eight, two, as Lyndon Jones tries to clear him out. Jadlow sets a token screen there at midcourt. To Anderson, reverse. He's fouled as he goes up. That's going to go against Van Dyke, his first. But I thought he would reverse. He decided to come back strong side of the basket like that's what he was going to do. The Miners in a man-to-man -man now, and Indiana's just had two lob passes. Anderson's got position, and you see Davis doesn't come to help quick enough. Eric goes right around him and then does try to sneak back around, and that's Van Dyke, the guy that's had good luck at blocking shots with the foul. There's 44. That's Foster. He's a transfer from UCLA, so he sat out last year, seven-footer, and this is the first game he's played in for the Miners, and it didn't take uh, Coach Haskins long to get him in the line. Missing the first, sends the second up, it's good. He has five to lead both teams, 9-2 in the end. He's been quite a steady player for just a young freshman. And he has drawn the assignment now of guarding Foster. Foster, seven-foot junior. Hardaway. So Hillman's trying to guard Johnson, 6'7". Terry Johnson and... Uh, Prevent that ball from coming into him. Now Johnson's outside, so it'll be easier for Joe. There's Foster. Stewart shot is no good. And uh, Anderson clears it very effectively coming in on the deep bounding ball. Jones with the drive, puts it up, no good. Foster clears it. Here comes the break, and that's what we don't want to give the Miners. Tim Hardaway with his first field goal. And on conversion, they are as tough as any team we play. Yeah, especially when Hardaway 10 has the ball. That's the guy they wanted. That's a travel by Edwards. Simple picking up favors uh, Texas El Paso. 15-16 remaining first half. Timeout. You're watching the Indiana University Basketball Network. Indiana 9, Texas El Paso 4. Significant wins are when you win the national championship. That's significant. Uh, there are games that uh, that you win uh, during the Big Ten season that are important to the conference race. There are games when you uh, when you win uh, in December that are important to the way you're playing, and that's what this was. 
to us. Okay, his comment on that game and uh, loose ball. Foster got a hand on it as we're back to action now. Lyndon Jones coming in the middle off to Hillman. Outside is Anderson. That's off the rim. Tipped up and boy, I'll tell you, that was a tip right off the end of Jay Edwards' fingers. Very fortunate to control that. Anderson made a good shot there, but he was uh, just a little flat on that shot. Edwards in good position. Another offensive rebound for Indiana. 34 is Antonio Davis. Drives on Jadlow. Fire short off the rim. Rebound to Jones. Bodies down underneath the basket. Indiana on the break. Edwards down the baseline. Has it knocked away. Gets it right back. Goes into the paint. Up to Jadlow. And over the rim, but draws a foul. See, Edwards did a nice job there. Looked like he was open for a shot and passed it up for a dribble closer to the basket to see what else might develop. That foul will go on Foster. Watch now. He could have taken it from there. He drives in, gets two men on him, and a nice bounce pass. The shot fake. And Jadlow did a nice job of drawing that foul. That's one thing Indiana has done, Chuck. They've shot 130 more free throws than their opponents. It's unbelievable, really, because they've given up about 100 more field goal shots. Uh, but Indiana's really done well in drawing the fouls and getting to the foul line. Uh, Jadlow, 81%, misses his first, misses the second as well, and it's a golden opportunity to push it up by two more. Orlando's rush, number four, is in the minors lineup. Watch Johnson. Foster. Now this is rush. Inside to Foster, backing in, and they're going to call that foul on Anderson. Randy Drury making that call. Anderson's first, and the second against the Hoosiers. He's just going to have his hands full today, Garden, uh, this time a seven-footer in Foster. The lob comes all the way back out to Davis. Out of rush. Look at, uh, Johnson inside with Hillman. And there's a quick turnaround by Jerry Johnson. He really had the elbows flying there. It was uh, Steve Wilmer under the basket, but no call was made that time, and a quick two for Johnson. Anderson looking under now drops it back out. Under to Jadlow makes the shot fake misses tipped up knocked out of bounds off the hands of Jay Edwards. Well Indiana really was underneath that basket battling they were shoved under maybe a little too deeply but uh, they were under there fighting and inside the miners uh, defense. We have a timeout 12 check that 13 29 remaining. You're watching Indiana basketball from Assembly Hall in Bloomington where the Hoosiers hold the five-point lead. Davis. Foster. Tries to drive. Hand check again on Eric Anderson. And his second foul as the big junior college transfer, or the big college transfer, actually, from UCLA, Greg Foster had made the first move. You really have to concentrate on keeping your feet low, keep your hands off the guy, because at this distance, 15 feet, he's not going to hurt you. It's going to take him two or three dribbles to get to the basket, you're going to get help. Foster now posts in on Anderson. They're going to try to pick up that third on him. He fires it high over the rim, and Jadlow pulls it down and is immediately fouled by Antonio Davis. Watch now, Anderson did a nice job. Foster was falling back on that shot. Jadlow's in good position, gets fouled from behind. Indiana takes a lot of free throws, Chuck, and so that shot they take when they get fouled, of course, doesn't count as a field goal, and that's one of the reasons why the other team will shoot more field goals as long as Indiana can keep getting that foul. Oh, great move inside by Jay Edwards off the pass from Lyndon Jones. Those two have worked so many times together. It's almost... Uh, just eye contact and recognizing what the other one's going to do that sets that kind of a play up. Throws it away. 23, Jerry Johnson trying to hit the wing. In this case, Tim Hardaway, and he threw it behind him. Well, good defensive pressure. Hardaway has not been able to hold the ball a lot. They forced four turnovers now for Texas El Paso. Uh, Indiana's playing well today again. Let's see what Indiana tries to do offensively here. Anderson. Inside. Oh, that's a great drop off to Jadlow out to Jones. Anderson goes up, won't fall, draws the foul. And significantly, that's number three on Davis. He's going to have to come right out. It's like Van Dyke's going to step in. Tony Haskins goes right to the bench. The freshman from Mesa, Arizona, replaces the junior from Oakland, California. Where 
inside the 12 and a half minute mark. Anderson at the line on the shooting foul. <laughs> Gary Cairn averages uh, a little over nine and a half points a game. Has had a high of 16 today, and he has seven already. Hardaway to Van Dyke. Now to Foster. Pretty tall lineup in there, last. And that's a trap. Well, if you can force the big man to get the ball outside, we watch Anderson on that foul. And here again, Foster's got it 12 feet away. If you can force the offense to get their ball 12 feet away, the big man, they're not going to hurt you nearly as much as they do on the block. We've seen so many times in the Big Ten where the offense uh, get that ball on the block, and you can't stop them once that ball comes in. So the defense is playing well today. Jones to Hillman. Indiana 15 to 6. That advantage. Nine points. Hillman makes it 11. Jones second basket. So now it's 17 6 at the 11.43 mark. Three point effort. Over the back. That foul is going to go against 52 Van Dyke as Anderson had the good inside position and the block. Well, that's a clinic here on block out. Watch Anderson on the top of your screen. Johnson takes a, he's back into his man. He goes up and Dyke's had a cover behind. He can't really pull it down, uh, but Van Dyke fouls from behind. Anderson, a good job on the boards. Don Haskins, uh, not very happy. Number 32, Johnny, pardon me, Johnny Melvin, a freshman from Chicago, is in the lineup replacing Johnson and deeper into the bench as uh, Stuart Prince. Or Prince get, Stewart, I'm sorry. Don't get a lot of scoring from their bench, Chuck. Uh, after the starting five, four points a game is the most anybody has. So I don't think Don's used to this much substituting at this part of the ball game. Well, it's bonus time for Indiana. Eleven and a half minutes. We're going to see two substitutions for Indiana. The one is coming in right now. Jamal Meeks will replace Lyndon Jones. You know, we don't really talk enough about Lyndon. What, what a great contribution he's making now. He is today because uh, Hardaway out of the ball game now. I'm sorry, uh, he's still in there. Hardaway has not really become the factor in this point of the game. He's a 20 point scorer. Anderson also comes out. And Brian Sloan replaces the freshman from Chicago to sales. He's right at his average, nine points, as he sits down at the 11.30 mark. So coach talking to Eric, he said, you got your hand on that big center. You can't do that. They're going to call a foul every time. Prince Stewart to Tim Hardaway. Hardaway tries to drive down on Edwards. Good feet inside and step in by Jamal Meeks. Edwards to Hillman. Behind the screen. Three. That's good. Boy, Brian Sloan set a beautiful screen for Joe. Well, Edwards is really playing well, Chuck. He's not trying to score every time he gets the ball, but he's trying to look to see how Indiana can score two points. Excellent pass and the pick that time by Sloan. Good steal by Jamal. And a travel. Intimidation by Jay Edwards. Of course, Prince Stewart to turn it over. Well, Indiana with the lead of 17, 22 to 6. 16 make that. 10 52 remaining. Gilman, Meeks cutting through. Now Edwards. Gilman had the shot, wouldn't take it. Edwards. Tries to get a little rotation going across the top and a whistle as Steve Wilmer makes the call. A foul against Texas El Paso. I think he was trying to make a pass there and the defense really blocked the ball, but he kept his sense to just try to pick it up and dribble out of that situation and end up getting fouled. Jay's really playing a lot smarter now. Well, UTEP's in a little trouble now, Laz. They have two with three. That would be Antonio Davis. He is on the bench. And now David Van Dyke and Coach Don Haskins is going once again to his bench. 23, Jerry Johnson, will be coming back in. Van Dyke sits down, has not scored, averages 12 points a game. So Texas El Paso will have to play a shorter lineup now. Still 10.30 left in the half, and two of their uh, big players are out. Second shot rolls and drops. Eight points for Edwards. Indiana's most prolific three-point shooter, 24 of 54. Jay has yet to fire one from that bonus range. Well, Meeks is really putting the pressure on Hardaway. He's having trouble doing what he wants to. Tillman. Tillman takes 32. 
Johnny Melvin outside. Into Foster. Foster and Meeks gets a hand in on Foster as he was outletting out into three point range. First foul on Jamal. Jamal came in from way outside that time. That was his man the pass was going to. And just got caught slapping down, but he's right being in position there when that center wheels in the middle. As quick as he is, he can come in there and knock that ball away. It's only the fourth foul against Indiana. El Paso already over the limit. Melvin gets it off. Hardaway. And Hardaway for two. He had to earn that two as Jamal didn't go for that fake. He just made a good individual drive that time. 24-18 inside the 10-minute mark. And up off the rim. No good. Tipped high again. Jadlow gets it. Blocked away. They're going to count that basket. Uh, if there was good observation from outside. And let's wait to see. Goaltender. Yes, sir. Yep. All right, let's watch it now. Indiana's really hitting those offensive boards. Watch Hillman try to use that rim. He gets around 44, but he can't get the shot. It's Brian Sloan with a tip. Jadlow catches it, and there's the slap. As Foster knocked it away, goaltending and a chance for three as Todd's uh, got a free throw. Don Haskins not happy with that call. We call the foul on Johnny Melvin. And and it drops. So Todd makes it a three-point play. One from the field and one from the line. 27-8. 19-point Hoosier lead with 9.30 and a second or two to play in the first half. Outside. Oh, that's only two on the line by Johnny Melvin. Watch Meeks. Into Edwards inside the paint for two. He got his feet taken out from under him from the back side. He'd already gotten the shot away. He's just a great shooter, Chuck. 19 point lead now for Indiana. And he throws it away again as Prince Stewart handles from top. This is Melvin Foster. And a steal by Sloan. Here's the lead, a little bit too deep. He, let, he tried to lead uh, Joe. Hardaway just beat him down the floor and a timeout by Don Haskins. All right, Haskins is going to talk it over with 8.54 to play in the first half. You're watching the Indiana University Basketball Network where Indiana has a comfortable 19-point lead. Sunday says, yeah, I looked at the Louisville film again. I'm, I'm sure he must look at that film quite a bit. But what he's doing is watching the mistakes, and then in practice, he's correcting those mistakes, and the team has really taken hold of that. We haven't been any fast break games, and that half-court defense is excellent. The rebounding's much better. Uh, the team's just playing real well right now. Well, there's uh, Jay Edwards coming in from the back side to take it away from Foster as you look at the field goals. They're holding the other team way below the 40% mark the last three games, and Indiana keeps creeping up to that 50% mark themselves. Now they were going to handle a little give and go between Edwards and Sloan, and uh, Edwards faked it down. Sloan made the pass and threw it away. Those are what hurt, though, those turnovers. We haven't had nearly as many uh, lately, though, but hate to see any at all, especially like that. 63 now. The optimum, of course, is an error-free game. That's almost impossible to achieve, although that is the optimum. It's like a 900 series in bowling. You always target for it. Well, I don't know about zero. If you had zero turnovers, you'd never make a pass that uh, uh, you might not make any passes into the post. Um, you might like to have three or four or five, just uh, uh, just to know you're, you're just trying to Just in case you're doing it'd something. It'd be huh? hard. It'd be hard to have zero, I'll tell you. A yeah, whistle, and they're going to call that foul a holding foul. Must have been on a pick. Yeah, uh, on goes a against uh, the Johnson. Miners. Personal, uh, Ryan Sloan personal, will be shooting. So the half-court defense is really getting sticky now. Eight minutes, three seconds remaining. Since that last time out, we have played 51 seconds. It's still 29-10. Don Haskins, what a brilliant career he's had with the Miners. Edwards, Gilman, Jadlow, Sloan, and Jamal Meeks as Sloan readies his second. And that's off the rim. Brian with one for two on that trip to the strike. And we're inside the eight minute mark. Deep off the rim, Hardaway chased down by Foster. Back to Rush. Yeah, 
pleasantries that you see out of this, the great mental adjustment Indiana's making. Jandlow came over to shut down that drive by Stewart. Here's Foster on a double step and knocked away by Jamal Meeks. Good hustle. Well, you just look how hard it is for the Miners to run an offense. Indiana's taking them out of their, their pattern. They like to run a lot of motion, but there just doesn't seem to be a lot of offensive uh, uh, success. This time they got in the post and took a shot. Up off the glass on a good handoff from Stewart to Hardaway on the inbounds. 30 to 12. Edwards. Now he protects the ball. Sloan to Meeks. Knocked away. Out of bounds, Indiana. Miners have gone to that man to man. That 3 2 zone at the beginning just gave up too many baseline shots. Now with the man-to-man, -man, they put a little more pressure on. Joe Hillman. Meeks, that's really not in the range that he would normally shoot. He's not in there as a shooter right now anyway. Drops it off. Here's Sloan stepping in. And an offensive foul as Brian Sloan just gets too deep. Jamal created the offense there by drawing Brian's man to him. Brian gets called for the charge. Let's watch. His pass has already been made. He's going in. Johnson set. And there's the call. Chucky White checks in for Indiana. He'll be replacing Sloan. Brian sits down with uh, one foul. A little problem getting into the flow, but uh, we'll probably see him before this game's over anyway. 6.52 remaining. John White got a nice hand. Look at that hand by Jamal Meeks. Here's the break with Hillman on the drive. Goes to the basket. Foul. Prince Stewart committing his first. That will send Joe Hillman to the line on the breakaway. That's why they had the padding under the basket. I see he gets hammered right into it. Watch this deal. Watch Jamal. High dribble by Hardaway. Oh, he was going to pass it, and it slipped out of his hands. Jamal comes right up with it and feeds it to Hillman. Hillman will sit down after these attempts on any dead ball opportunity. Joe. <laughs> done a pretty good job. He has three field goals. One of those a three-pointer. Now his first free throw. Still coming off that big series he had at the Indiana Classic. 18 points, eight rebounds against little Arkansas Little Rock. Playing well again today. And hits the second. So Joe will take a breather at the 6.45 mark. And then Joe's back in. Now Indiana is going with Meeks, Jones, and Edwards along with Todd Jablow and Chucky e. White. And it's great to see so many players in the game, too. And the coach has been able to put, keep the fresh players in there, and the level of play has not gone down. Now, Foster put that ball down. Foster gets it right back and goes up. That's a good hitting play for a young man who has not seen any interscholastic competition this year, eligible just today. Edwards on the cut through the paint. No good. Rebound to Hardaway. Got that shot over the seven-footer, too, and just didn't go. And look at uh, Johnson going to pull it down. Johnson tries to flail it up. Beaks on the break. Oh, there's a pull. No call on that. No official saw it. That was 10 Hardaway stopping the breakaway of Jay Edwards. Boy, our replay should show that. Edwards uh, tipped that ball, didn't realize there was another Indiana player behind him and tipped it right out of bounds. I think he was still upset about it getting his shirt pulled. It's 32-14 with 5.45.50 remaining to be played. Foster over Jablo, no good. The rebound, Jamal Meeks just all over this court. The drive lays it off to Jones and misses. Tipped up by Jablo. Oh, what a great pass by Jamal. He saw the big seven footer come to block that shot. Dumped it right off. Indiana got the tap. 34 14. Hardaway. Good move on Meeks to Foster. And Foster loses the ball. Jablo ties him up. That was Jamal Meeks coming yep. from the weak side. Knocked it out of Foster's hands. Jamal is all over the floor, Chuck. Let's watch. Here's the pass. Now watch Jamal. He comes. No, he hit the. He didn't hit it. It hit the bottom of the backboard. Is what he hit. And then 
Giadlo tied him up, but uh, Meeks made him change the shots as the backboard hit the ball. Van Dyke is back in. Now remember, Van Dyke is playing with three fouls. That's a surprise. You hate to see a player pick up four fouls in the first half, but I guess Don Haskins feels the game is getting out of hand now. He's got to get back into it a little before the half. Shoulder bump, and the foul will go against Lyndon Jones, and that's going to send Hardaway to the line. Well, Foster has to sit down. He's over talking to one of the assistant coaches. Explaining some of the purposes that uh, they expect out of him while he's in there. Now Hillman's back in, and he'll replace Edwards. Jay sits down. Jay has worked very hard. Ten points, a good offensive game. But as you pointed out, Laz, he has set so many things up with his alert eyes and, and good hands and good passes. And I think earlier in the year, Coach felt that he wasn't doing that. He was just looking to score on his own and uh, score with the ball. He's got to learn to move without the ball and to set other players up. And I think he's really getting the hang of that now in the last two weeks. 34-15. Hardaway has nine of those 15 points. Now 10. And it's an 18-point Indiana lead. 34-16. Pressure as the Miners try to come at Indiana using all opportunities, and that being one of them. A drop-off and a foul that will go against Rush. Arlandis Rush, the junior from Denver, Colorado. Junior college transfer. It's Jamal just creating things inside again. He, he used that pass fake. There really wasn't a pass we made there, but... He's just trying to get the defense to move around. Uh, but then he makes drives and, and tries to get people open. And again, this time, Lyndon Jones going to the line. It's Lyndon's first point. He averages nearly seven. Best game, 18, as you get a good shot at the sophomore. 6-1 sophomore from Marion. The balance scoring is what's going to do it. Ten points for Edwards. Hillman and Anderson both have nine. Chucky White is stripped. There's an elbow thrown out by Hardaway to clear the lane. No call. Rush will fire. Connects from three-point range. 35-19 at the 444 mark. Chucky White with a big rebound, but had it taken away. Deanna will employ the offense from the far side of the floor, right in front of part of the media. There's a chance for the old hidden ball trick. Yep. Uh, if you'd had a, uh, a Harlem Globetrotter basketball there, but it looks like they got the room back. The defense by Jerry Johnson. Indiana trying to set it up on the far side with a good pass from Jamal Meeks to Chucky White, but Johnson interfered. Hillman to Meeks. Jones. Jadlow trying to cross in front and puts it up, scores, and draws the foul. Wow, look, he goes to thank Joe Hillman for that good pass. And that's Van Dyke. That could be four on him. Let's see. That is going to be his four. Watch the move. He almost hooked there. He got in some trouble there, and then the shot finally drops in. He's got a chance, so that's a big play. Four fouls on Van Dyke and a three-point chance for Indiana. Johnny Melvin back in, replacing Van Dyke. As Jadlow makes it a three-point play and his eighth point. And now Jay Edwards back in, replacing Chucky White. It's 38-19. Foster's going to come back in. You see him there, 44. He's only got one foul. So he'll probably play the rest of that. At the 415 mark, it's 38-19, Indiana. Stewart. Prince finds his man. That's Hardaway. No good. Rebound comes off to Lyndon Jones. Jones up into the attack area. Over to Hillman for two. Yes. Indiana's just executing the conversion almost to perfection. And a reach-in foul by Jay Edwards. Yeah, the offense is going real well. Hillman open on the baseline. They're not being selfish. They're moving it on the pass instead of the dribble. Jay just caught that time not, not moving his feet. Stuck his arm out there. A long way from the basket. So it's his first foul. It's 42-19. The seventh team foul for Indiana puts... 
you tap into a bonus situation. And it will be number 32, Johnny Melvin, the freshman from Chicago, to shoot. Off the rim, no good. Off into the hands of Edwards. Barely hit the rim as Edwards didn't have jump to get that one. Came right in his arms. To Jones. He cuts inside. Strip. Beautiful, beautiful move by Melvin. Over to Melvin. And he can't get it to fall. A little shove. Jones wheels it out. Jadlow. And he's hammered by Foster. And we have a travel call. Jim Bain makes that call. Well, Texas Minor fans here don't appreciate that call at all. Neither does Don Haskins. But we have a timeout at the 320 mark. Position four on our network at the 320 mark. You're watching Indiana basketball from Assembly Hall in Bloomington, the Indiana 40, Texas El Paso 19. The code, John. Able to strip from behind. Good defense by the two back players to prevent uh, El Paso getting this basket. At the 313 mark, Edwards with the save. Jamal didn't want to make that pass. Edwards saved him. And a whistle away from the ball, and that's going to be a blocking foul. Illegal pick set by Jamal. And on Meeks, that's First personal foul number two. I again feel, and we've seen this so many times, that uh, Indiana possibly with its aggressiveness, and yet we have seen it called against other teams too. The officials are very cognizant now of moving picks and blocks this year. They always watch for that. Uh, you know Indiana's going to set a lot of picks. See the free throws now. Indiana's uh, scoring 23 points a game on field goals to the opponent's 11. Today it's 15 to 4, so 11-point uh, span for Indiana. Leading the ball game is 19. Tim Hardaway misses. Rebound to Edwards. Now Indiana at the three-minute mark with a chance to expand on its 21-point lead. To Jeff Oliphant in at that last dead ball. Oliphant looking, Edwards cutting through. Hardaway really right on his shoulder. Holding, bumping. There's a foul. That's going to go against Hardaway. Looked like a wild shot, but I think Jay knew he was going to get fouled. He had a guy in front and a guy in back. Personal foul. Well, they call that on 23. Jerry Johnson instead of Hardaway. And that came from behind. Yep. Uh, but you can see when Jay moves around and gets that ball on the run, he's got a much better chance uh, to get the foul or to get a good shot. Instead of waiting for the ball to come to him, he's trying to get open himself, and that's going to help him offensively. Magnus checks in line. And Magnus replaces Todd Jadlow, who sits down with eight points in this first half. Much better game for Todd. Holding that center position down real well. He had a couple games where he didn't uh, play all that well. This one, uh, much better. Jay with an even dozen. Losers with a commanding... 23-point lead, 42 to 19 at the two and a half minute mark. Rush. Stewart gets it right back, three-point range, steps in, and it won't fall, but Foster clears it. Foster in a lot of trouble underneath. Blocked away by Belkowski to Hillman. Now Oliphant. Edwards. Jones hits a cutting Joe Hillman, and Hillman is fired, fires the ball up. And that will be against Prince Stewart. Indiana's yeah, making that cut toward the middle there, and it's really been open. Usually you see that against the zone a lot. We talk about getting that ball in the three-second lane, but against the man-to-man, -man, they've had good success. And get it inside, taking the shot, or continue on the drive. Stewart's second foul, Hillman at the line. Okay, now, Laz, why would it be effective against the man-to-man? Although you'll have a man guarding you, you still, if you catch it on the run, you can turn the right or left, depending on which way you're coming from, and right to the basket. It's just a good way to get inside any kind of defense. Hardaway and a hand check foul will go against Indiana. Steve Melvin coming over to indicate that the foul was on three. Jay Edwards. The hand foul there. That's the second one on Jay here in the first hand. Mark, Mark Robinson replaces Edwards for Indiana. Robinson, a 6'5 junior from California. 
Mark sat out last year, was redshirted, and used that year to build his knowledge of the Indiana system. And on the line, ball hit the underside of the basket. Robinson lost it as it came down. You got to be ready for that. Coach is off the bench. Uh, when that ball's popping around like that, you got to grab it, get down the floor with it. Hardaway calling something over to Jim Bain. Uh, Randy Drury down there giving him the ball. Hardaway back out to Stewart. Prince a shot off the front of the rim with a minute 35 seconds remaining. Jones. Hardaway all over him. They're still staying in the man. And there's Hillman cutting again right across the top of the key. Drive by Oliphant. Lost through the hands and into the hands of Foster. Doug Robinson had it again that time and uh, didn't come away with it. Rush. No good. Up on uh, an errant rebound and uh, blocking assignment by Indiana. Hardaway now with 12. Right, you can't just wait for the ball to come. you got to block out the offensive man who's coming to the basket. And they didn't block out that time. The ball came right in his hands. Jones, as we're inside one minute. Oliphant, good from that range, will not shoot. And a foul, a reach in. And that is against Tim Hardaway. His first, Brian Sloan for the Hoosiers. Replaces Belkowski. Magnus in his last year. He's a five-year eligible player from Bogota, Colombia. As Lyndon Jones readies the one and one. Well, I tell you, the trips to the line have made a lot of difference in Indiana's last three, uh, well, let's say last four games, because they played a couple in that Hoosier Classic or Indiana Classic that uh, made a difference, too. They've been able to score a little bit better from that free throw line. They get teams in a lot of foul trouble, by the way, by the amount of uh, drives they're making to the baskets, and, of course, that ends up in free throws. Forty-five seconds left, first half. And it's good, and all Indiana half. Hardaway. Works on Jones, beats it off on the top. The shot by Melvin is no good. Deep bound, and it's off into the hands of the high leaper, Mark Robinson, and a reach in, and Hardaway will be called for personal number two. It's a better job for Robinson going after the ball. And that time when they tried to take it away, he held on to it enough so that he was fouled. Let's watch now. It looks like El Paso's got this rebound, and Mark keeps it alive and then goes high to get it. Now watch how he keeps it out of the, the hands of the defense until he does get fouled on the elbow and the ball gets slapped around. Melvin back in, Hardaway sits down. 44-21. Young man at the line now has had a lot of trouble shooting free throws. He misses the first of a bonus opportunity there. Let's see if Texas El Paso plays for the last shot. Melvin. Stewart to Foster. Sloan really giving away a lot of height, but he took position away from Foster. Drops it off. Near steal by Robinson. Back to Stewart at the buzzer. No good. And then we've come to the end of the first 20 minutes of play. We are taking position number five on the network. You're watching Indiana basketball from Assembly Hall in Bloomington. The score, Indiana 44, UTEP 21. And a step in and a travel by Jerry Johnson. Substitution, Orlando's rush back in the UTEP lineup replacing Prince Stewart. There are 25 youth and adults representing the Centerville United Methodist Youth Fellowship attending today's game as a holiday outing, and they send to us, and we send to all of you, holiday greetings. And that comes from Marvin Singleton. Nice to have them here. Edwards, a little hand on by Johnson. Lead inside to Jablo, and Jablo strongly puts that ball up. Now he has a tendency to fall back anyway. That's a pretty strong move. Right, he knew he had one man cleared, but there's another defensive player to help. He did a nice job of moving that ball around to get the good shot. Foster for a seven-footer, moves it out of trouble, make the pass. Here's the 
cut inside. Jadler with a hands-on and a push. And that's going to send 34 Antonio Davis. Uh, well, let's check that. That's before the shot. So Davis just draws the foul. Jadlow's first. We've seen that a lot today. That hand check by Indiana that's caused a foul. There it is again as Jadlow gets caught. Got to move those feet. Rush and gets the ball of the ball. So Rush with a couple of field goals, one of them from three-point range. It's 48-23. Indiana by 25. Gilman. Edwards. Everything's inside. Edwards has to move it through. And uh, bad pass trying to clear it back on top. It's about the only thing he could do with it. Anderson. Out of bounds, Indiana. UTEP's going to go that three-point offense, it looks like, to get a chance to come back. Another sub in, Prince Stewart. He was a starter, actually, back in the lineup. Rush comes out. I, I think that uh, that three-point shot is what got him out of the lineup. Maybe Haskins does want to go to that three-point shot. Don Haskins is quite a disciplinarian, much in the same pattern as Bob Knight. They've been the best friends for a long time. And a whistle. And there's going to be... Uh, hands-on foul by Prince Stewart, his third. So the Miners are really in a lot of trouble. Stewart with three. Hardaway has two. Van Dyke, four. Look again. Here's the pass to Hillman, and Stewart will just get a look at this. Shoves there on Edwards. That's what he gets called for. It's a flagrant foul, and that's, that's right. going to put Edwards at the line, shooting the uncontested free throws, and Indiana will have the ball. I haven't seen that name Prince since way back in my plan days, Chuck. Remember the guy from Iowa, Candy LaPrince. Candy LaPrince. Candy LaPrince, he was a guard. He was a pretty good guard, too. I just thought he had a great name, though. Yeah. What's your name? Candy LaPrince. Did they call him Sweets for short? I don't know. He was a good player, though. There's Don Haskins talking to Bain about it. So a flagrant foul is two free throws, and then out of bounds to Indiana. Well, as you know, we were talking earlier about big guards and big players. And if you remember, years ago, I think either when you were playing or just after that, as Jadlow goes inside, knocked out of Edwards' hand. Back up again on a whistle, and that's going to be an elbowing foul. Uh, as Jadlow tried to work for position inside on his, his second. Uh, Let's take a look. It's, uh, he's going to get caught. Watch the left-hand corner of your screen. Edwards just missed this tough shot. Watch right there. They're battling, and uh, looks like uh, Jadlow did get. Look at the hands all over the face there. Uh, uh, I was saying, uh, Texas El Paso had a big guard, 6'8 or 6'9 guard. And uh, I remember Bob Knight saying back in those days that uh, it really doesn't make too much difference how big they are back there playing the game. It's when they get under the basket. Well, the logic of the game has changed a lot since Magic Johnson at Michigan State. And so 6-9 uh, means an awful lot wherever it is on the court. Right? The foul is against number four, Orlando's Rush. Well, this team uh, really seems to be able to get a lot of fouls called, this Indiana team. Can't remember. A Coach Knight team that has gone to the line so many times, so over 30 times a game now. Well, oh, that's a great stuff. Eric Anderson takes it right through a maze of arms. 52-23, the Hoosiers. It's a cut and a reach in. They call a foul on the Hillman as and going for the ball. He got an arm. Joe, that's his second. All right, here's the play again. Watch Anderson. Oh, he goes up strong. Even the seven-footer Foster can't stop that. 52-23. Go, 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 Jay. Oh, look at the move. Double bounce over the back. Out of bounds as Steve Wilmer makes the call off Indiana. Fans didn't like that. They thought there should have been a foul. You be the judge. Well, let's see. Here's the angle. Joe just can't get the roll here, but he's going to be involved. Watch the lower part. 23 comes from the no. 44 comes from behind. A little bit, I guess. 13 is Prince Stewart. Inside to Johnson. Johnson uh, to Foster, rather. Foster cleared it out and hooked over the rim. Indiana with the board. Indiana 27 to 19. 
19 in the first half on the boards. Look at Edwards drive, puts it up short, he's fouled, and will go to the line. There's that drive to the middle coach talked about. Draws the foul, that's four on Johnson. Personal foul, catches on pass foul number 23, Jerry Johnson. His fourth personal, the team's third. Two free throws, number three, Jay Edwards. See substitution now, Don Haskins goes down his bench and calls upon Mark McCall, a sophomore from El Paso. The tip is not terribly deep. They brought 11 players. And they have a host of foul trouble right now. Jerry Johnson with his fourth. Antonio Davis with three. Van Dyke with four and Prince Stewart with three. 16 for Edwards. And, uh, Coach Knight's going down his bench, taking a look. We're gonna see some substitutions here pretty soon. Up off the glass on a good move through an Indiana defense by Hardaway. He's been scoring well, but he has not been able to dish off to his teammates. I think he's gotta do both. He's gotta score and get points for his teammates, so Indiana's defense him well today. Anderson could do nothing with it, so he kicked it back out to Hillman. Over to Edwards for three, and that's not going to fall, and pulled down by the big one, Greg Foster, seven-footer from Oakland, California. Great double pick that time as the defensive man had to go through two picks, left Jay wide open. Foster is doubled. Out of bounds and off Hillman's foot. And we have a timeout at the 15:38 mark, second half. You're watching Indiana basketball from Assembly Hall in Bloomington, Indiana, where the Hoosiers lead the visiting minors 54-25. But it's not going to come this afternoon unless there's a real miracle turnaround. But we see so many different aspects of this game, Laz, as to what causes this to happen, what causes that. Would you sum it up in one word for Indiana concentration uh, the last few games? They really have concentrated on what they're trying to do, and uh, I think we never place enough emphasis on uh, on teams coming to a sample hall, especially non-conference teams. They don't come very often. It's difficult to come here and play well. Hardaway really being harassed by Jones, but he does get this one off for three. Tim Hardaway, that's his first. He is their best shooter from that range. Seven of 16, now eight of 17. Anderson goes inside and tries to fight for the ball taken away. Foster with a lead up court. And Stewart gives to Hardaway for two. Hardaway's at his average now. He has 19. Seven of those coming in the second half. Anderson. Edwards has taken one from three-point range. He has not hit. Oh, that's a great lob inside. And what a fire. that We could see that. That was our perfect angle, and it went right to Jay in good position. Tough pass. He's got to get over the defense, but keep it away from that backboard. And uh, again, full phase offense now for Jay Edwards. Oh, what a move. There's Hardaway with 21. That's why he's such a good player. He's really caught on, uh, like I said, himself scoring now here in the second half, too. But it's really to no avail for the team. Let's see what Jadlow can do with it. Indiana's offense is up around the free throw line extended. Normally, we would see opportunities for back cuts to develop off this. The defense gets down a little bit lower as Indiana forced him down, and Jadlow turns it over with a walk. about the 10th or 11th turnover in the game. Indiana had eight in the first half. 56-32, who's your lead is a couple of dozen. Jamal Meeks will be checking back in in a moment. Foster over Anderson for two, and Anderson caught a arm or a forearm in the, in the face, and he's shaking it off as Greg Foster hits his first field goal of the second half. Anderson, Hillman. Over an Anderson pick to Jones. Underneath to Anderson, and he goes to the glass. He does that well, too, Chuck. We saw that stuff earlier in the half. He protects the ball. He doesn't let the defense bother him. Got another one there. Up off the glass as Jadlow pulls it down. 
Loose ball and a scramble. And Anderson right in the melee. Jablo underneath and Anderson on top. It'll be jump ball. Jamal meets for Jones. Let's watch Anderson. He's playing defense here. He's got his hands off. There they go back on a little bit. That's where you get called for the fouls. Foster on a give in side to 34 Antonio Davis. And Davis hits his first field goal of the game. The average is 16. We're inside 13 minutes. Todd looking. Inside to Anderson for nope, but he draws the foul. Indiana's found their key here in the second half. Just keep pushing it inside because Anderson's having good success in getting position. Then he, of course, gets a chance to go to the line. In the first half, he was 7 of 8 from the free throw line. Last, uh, an interesting thing to, to watch. Jadlow comes outside to draw Foster away, and Anderson posts up. Anderson slides out on the baseline. They go over to defend him, and Jadlow posts up. See, that's good if you have those two big men. When Indiana has John White in the lineup, that's difficult to do. So that's what Indiana's trying to take advantage, especially with the foul troubles the big men have as Van Dyke, 52, comes back in. We know he's got four, so you, you go with the flow. If, you're, if the opponent's big men are foul trouble, you try to take it inside. If they're gonna play a zone, and then you have to go uh, with Edwards from the outside with the jumper. Hardaway to Stewart, Prince off to Foster. Foster gives it right back over. Good defense by Indiana, flipped right back into the hands of Mark McCall. Foster works his way in, goes for the rebound, off into the hands of Hillman. Now Meeks breaks it up to Edwards. Look how he tries to go into the paint, blocking foul. Well, that could have gone both ways. Uh, you know, I want to be prejudiced as much as I can toward Indiana's at, uh, at times, but Gene Edwards sort of lowered that shoulder. Let's see. See, the defense was moving to the left, not backwards, although it looked like it could have been backwards. He actually was moving to the left, so that's a good call. Here's John White in the lineup now. Jadlow sets for a while. Orlando's rush will replace Prince Stewart. Stewart sits down with four. Eight to Hillman. To White. Chucky. Works on Foster, delays it, goes up, draws the foul. And that's going to send Chucky White to the line. Foster's second person. Well, Indiana will go right back on the court tomorrow and practice in preparation for the always tough Kentucky Wildcats this next Tuesday. John and I will be on hand from the Rupp Arena in Lexington for that game which will be seen over many of these same stations. We invite you to join us. 7.30 is tip-off time. They are not going to be happy uh, campers. They got no, beat sir. by Bowling Green last night in the first round of the Kentucky uh, Holiday Tournament. First time in 35 years they've been beat, so they're going to be out for bear against Indiana. 11.59 remaining. You're watching the Indiana University Basketball Network where the Hoosiers have a commanding 62-36 lead. He's wearing a heavy bandage on that left side. We certainly hope it's nothing serious. I never like to see any player get injured. 25 of the 42 points scored by Hardaway. What a game he's had today. He's 17 divided between the other seven that have played. Stewart. Inside to Van Dyke, short, rebound to White, coming right through that lane and timing it well for the board. At the nine and a half minute mark, 24 point lead for Indiana, 66-42. Paul Meeks, inside to Edwards, 4-2. Boy, oh, is that a tough shot. He's leaning away from the basket. And, uh, that's just a shooter's touch when you can make those shots. Miners really crashing hard on the inside. Anderson with a hand over the top as Antonio Davis put it back up on the offensive rebound. Anderson has committed to his third foul. First of the second half. 
Let's watch this shot now. Usually we tell you players jump toward the basket. This time he's going away. And like he's jumping back. Oscar Robinson used to shoot this shot. It just takes a special talent. Nothing but that. Substitution. Foster, after a brief rest, comes back to replace Van Dyke. At the line will be Davis. Johnny Melvin back in the lineup. He's the 6'4 freshman from Chicago. Indiana's going with Jones, Meeks, White, Anderson, and Jay Edwards. Nine minutes remaining in this game. And the second misses, and White clears it. Jones hitting those boards. That's a big rebound off the missed free throw. goes across underneath and then comes back to the release. White. Bump. Meeks goes down. No call. Jamal threatens to go inside. Inside it goes. Antonio Davis a little bit too high and give Anderson another field goal. Well, that one looked pretty good anyway, Chuck. Well, I guess we'll never know. He's moving inside. Boy, he plays good for a 6'10". That looked pretty good. I yep. think that have made it. I'll give it to him anyway. Jerry Johnson, Davis, Melvin, Stewart. No good. Back up and good by Melvin. 70-44. Indiana by 26. Inside. Glass, a little shove. Right in the middle of the back. That lob might have been just a bit too far. And brought Bob Knight off the bench. An appropriate look. There is a timeout. 7.51 remaining. We're watching the Indiana University Basketball Network. If you stand around, you don't create anything. Let's watch Anderson. He keeps moving back and forth on the lane. Foster's trying to stay in front of him. Keeps, uh, keeps that hand away from the defense, and he cuts in front. He's got the left hand up, finally the pass comes in. So he had to work three or four times across the lane before he got open and got the pass. 62% for Indiana in the second half, although El Paso shooting a lot better, mostly Hardaway. Jeff Oliphant back in for Indiana. See what they can do with it. Johnson. Miners trying to gain some respectability in this game as Stewart fires from outside. And uh, a travel will be called against Jerry Johnson after he gets the board, just can't regain so his foot. I can't believe it. Look at him. He said, I finally got a rebound. You're going to call traveling? Tony is not happy with that call either. Johnson. 32, Melvin comes out. Well, we're happy to see Hardaway appears to be all right. Just rested that leg a little bit, and he's back in. Number 10. At the 720 mark, it's 70 44. Indiana with the ball and this commanding lead. Just got that lead early, Chuck, and it really kept it the same. And uh, the Miners have never come back to press them. That's how important it is to get an early start. Foster and Anderson having a real battle on the inside. Cross court, save on the baseline by Jones. At the 10 second mark on the shot clock, it is going to go. I wouldn't have believed that ball would have gone up there. Been on that, they kind of spun off the backboard the right way. And the drive. Stewart for two. Not getting back quick enough that time. Now that's the conversion that Indiana lost against Louisville. And uh, they just caught Indiana napping a little bit there. Oliphant. You see White direct Oliphant back out the top of the key and out of meets. Won't fire from there, but he's effective from that range. White tries to get some room, can't take it through. That was blocked. Vance uh, did not agree. Jim Bean made the call underneath. Lean in, and uh, they call a blocking foul. It'll be one on one. Sends Oliphant to the line as UTEP is over the limit. The, uh, Real good patience on offense. They've run the shot clock down to 10 seconds. 
Haven't taken the wild shots. It's going to be in for Johnson. He's fouled out. Johnson leaves at the 6-0-1 mark with only a field goal that came in the first half. He averages 12. So there's a deficit of 10 right there in this game. Seattle's done a good job of keeping that part of the offense out. Cree Smith will only replace Lyndon Jones. Smith, the senior from Tipton. And Jones to the bench with seven points. Oliphant, a senior in class, junior in eligibility from Lions, Indiana, 6'5". Which is one and a half points per game, so hitting this one, he'll be above his average. And thus. With five minutes, 55 seconds remaining, the Hoosiers with a 74-46 lead. El Paso with the ball. This is Greg Foster. Foster, and he'll hit it. It counts, and the foul is on Chucky White, his first. Yeah, John's going to have his hands full now. Foster's seven foot, and really, uh, John White's our tallest player, but they're at about 6'5". He's got that hand resting on the hip again. You're going to get called for that all the time, as we've seen today. That was a good call, so uh, the Myers will probably go to Foster a lot. So Oakland, California senior with a nice looking body, good development, and with a couple of more years ahead of him under the El Paso system down there could become a very potential threat. Four seconds remaining. And once again, you're right, Laz. They go right into the post. That's taken away, put back up by Davis, and scores. Oliphant to Robinson. Now meets. Inside. Smith. Tell White really wants to go one on one with Foster. The chance for him to use quickness outside shot. Three won't fall, and Robinson skies to pull that one down. Some good jumping ability in now between Robinson and this fellow. On the feed from baseline. Jamal did a nice job with a head fake. He looked up and got that bounce pass right around the defense. Uh, he can do it all. Tim Hardaway, the junior, with 27 points. And he's the game's leading scorer. Didn't get back quick enough that time. See why Hardaway came in such a heralded player. Travel called on Chucky White. Foster held some pretty good position, and White turns it over, and we have timeout with 3.48 remaining. You're watching the Indiana University Basketball Network. Indiana 78, Texas El Paso, minus 53 here at Assembly Hall have something to cheer about as the Hoosiers are in a 25-point lead over the University of Texas El Paso Miners. Miners really hold a jinx against Indiana down there. Bob Knight has not won in Texas El Paso's arena. We you remember one of those. 1973 for the uh, Christmas tournament they had. Uh, they got beat by a team that probably wasn't as good as we were, but... Uh, John Haskins came up with a formula that beat us. Well, we went down there in 1984, Laz, right. you and I, yeah. along with Jerry Wheatley. And telecast a, a very disappointing game for Indiana down there. That's when Mike Giomi was playing with uh, the Hoosiers and a couple of others. There's a beat inside. Robinson taking the loose ball. Karen's out of the bucket, but he draws the foul. Fouls on 30, Mark McCall. 
Let's see, Smith's going inside. That's a seven-footer he's trying to get around. Let's look how Foster grabbed the net that time. I was going to say, that's technical. Kind of pulled him up a little bit. Robinson gets some free throws. He's had trouble from the line today. And all season, averaging 38%. There is 31 points for Indiana from the foul line, five for Texas El Paso. Robinson 0 for 3 from the stripe. Still 25 point lead for Indiana. A call. Knocked away, Robinson chasing it down on the pass intended for Foster. Now McCall into Hardaway. That's Mike Delosio guarding Hardaway now. No good. Tipped away, out of bounds. Good call, Steve Wellmer. Says it's off the hand of Chucky White. So the Miners with another opportunity. Texas El Paso will go down to its first loss in eight games on the line. But an offensive foul before. They were 7-0 coming in. They beat Alcorn State by about 20. Uh, here's the replay again. Watch the elbow here. Ball to hook right there. See? Well, they're in a lot of trouble. Johnson has fouled out at the 601 mark. Davis has four. Van Dyke, four. Stewart has four. Hardaway has three. And we still have 241 to play. Underneath the Robinson? No, but he travels before him. Two and a half minutes left. We're stuck on this 78-53. Uh, not for long. As Mark McCall hits from the corner. Chucky White comes down, tries to counter at the opposite end. We have a jump ball. And it will be Indiana possession. El Paso stopped going into their big guy. They mentioned he's got quite a bit of size advantage. Indiana's getting some good shots, just not making them. Cree Smith steps up, drops it to Robinson, and Foster just comes right over the shoulder for his fourth foul. Foster wasn't going to let Robinson have an easy one, even if he had to foul him. They say if you have to, do it good. That's right. This is a good open shot. He passes it off. And Foster gets way out of position there. David Van Dyke is back in. He has four personals. Sitting down will be Rodney McCoy. 6'7", junior from Atlantic City. Mark is 0 for 3, but he hits this. Better for him that time. And this is off the front of the rim. Foster clears. We have two minutes remaining. There's the score. The glass. And that misses. Foster knocked out of his hands. Back up again. And this time, the slam dunk by 34, Antonio Davis. Averages 16 points, and he has only six, all of those in the second half. Drops it off. Oliphant to the glass. Won't go. Hardaway, with a minute and a half left, gets right by Delosio, puts it to the glass, and Mike fouls him. Hardaway's not playing, or didn't play the first half like he has been in the second half. He did get his 12 points in his first half. He's really created a lot of things here in the second half. He had really stopped him in the first half. Really, when the game was out of reach is when he finally started coming on. Rush is back in. Replaces McCall. Hardaway looking for his 28th, finds it. Let's watch uh, this rebounding effort by the Miners. Finally, it's Davis in there for the slam. And Hardaway hits again. He was not shooting well from the line coming into this game, only 59%. And he's improved upon that. Pass was intended. 
Mark Robinson, hard away, goes right around Smith. Loose ball chased down by Smith. Indiana has a three on two. And a foul will go against 52 Van Dyke. That's number five on Van Dyke as Oliphant makes the drive. Well, Van Dyke fouls out at the 109 mark, scoreless, Les. And he was their big shot block. Well, he's just a young freshman. Had a tough game today. 6'9 freshman from Mesa, Arizona. Good look at Jeff. His fourth free throw. Rush at the one minute mark. No, oh, he rattles and drops. That's Merle Heimer, number 33. Getting his first shot. Cree Smith misses. Rebound to Hardaway. We have 44 seconds remaining. And throws it away. The clock is running inside 40 seconds. 81-62 Indiana. Delosio to Robinson. The Hoosiers will now go to seven and four. The Miners drop to seven and one. Turn around by White. He's doubled to Delosio for three. Nope. Knocked away by Oliver. The Miners slept just a little bit on that pass. 16 seconds. Delosio waits hard away at midcourt and now gives ground because Hardaway has this kind of speed just break away and they're going to call a little bump a little brush on Delosio his second. Hardaway's got 29. No chance to get over 30. Mike just uh, gave him too much room there on the right side had to foul before he got around him. Six seconds remaining, and this crowd has stayed around right to the end. Now they begin to file out, nearly 15,000. There it is, point number 30. Hardaway, 20, 21. Perfect from the line here in the second half. And it won't fall. Robinson. I think he got away with a double dribble there. Three on the way as Smith lets it bounce off the front of the rim. Well, that's it. An interesting afternoon game. And this Saturday has produced another victory for the Hoosiers as coaches exchange congratulations there at center court. There's, there's Don, uh, a tremendous, tremendous coach and a great fiery competitor. And he, like Coach Knight, defends his players right down to the final call. The final score is Indiana 81, Texas Miners 63. We'll be back to check on scoring in just a minute.